Hello. Welcome to my Jubilee report for May 2022 on the electrical systems at our property in Huntingdonshire in England. Here's a reminder of the major components which currently make up the system. Further details can be found in the description below the video. This first graph shows the electrical energy coming in each day of the month from our two solar arrays and from the grid. The total solar production this month was 855 units, a daily average of 27.6 units. 69 grid units were imported in total, five of which were at the more expensive normal rate. 78.3 units were exported to the grid. This was 8.5% of the total electrical energy coming in and 9.2% of the solar energy produced. The solar contribution to the month's electricity input was 92.5%. This second graph shows the origin of the energy consumed by the property and the car. The figures behind this graph are mostly supplied by the Tesla app and the My Energy app supplies the car's home charging figures. Around 60% of the energy came directly from solar and a further 31.2% was solar coming to the property via the Powerwall, giving a total solar contribution to the energy used of 91.6%. About 154 of the solar units went into the car via the Zappi charger and the car was also given around 40 low rate units from the grid at the beginning of the month when it was nearly empty after our return from Yorkshire. With 20 expensive units from rapid charging on the first making up a large proportion of the cost, the 329 miles that were driven cost an average of 4.3 pence per mile. This graph shows the energy going into and coming out of the power wall each day as reported by the Tesla app. 89.2% of the energy that went in during the month came back out. No significant change from previous months. This is the self-power graph based on figures from the Tesla app, which reported that the proportion of self-power was 92.9%, remembering that nearly all of the energy coming from the power wall originated from solar. This next graph shows the solar southwest production over the years since 2012, this was the 6th best May out of the 11 years, with 491 units being produced by the array. May's arithmetic mean is now 492.6 units and the median is, obviously, this year's May output of 491. Here's the cumulative year-to-date graph, which keeps 2022 in 4th position out of the 11 years. This graph shows the daily output of the two solar arrays for the past 365 days. The 28-day moving average lines for both arrays are above where they were a year ago due to last May's dreadful reduction, but the southeast array has dipped back a bit since April. This is a brief view of the distribution of the energy input for the past 365 days. And here's the daily solar production for that same period. The final graph is the summary of our grid electricity usage since we moved here in the summer of 2011. The grey and red lines show the number of grid units used each month, as measured on the left-hand scale. The monthly electricity bill is shown by the yellow line and the right-hand scale, and the green line shows the monthly contribution to the feed-in tariff payments which we get for the old Southwest Array's production, with both lines moving significantly in the right direction. Having an electricity bill of under £15 for the month is very welcome, as was the quarterly FIT payment which eventually arrived near the end of the month. To get my feed-in tariff payment, I submit one of my quarterly Southwest Generation readings on the 1st of May. For the 11th year as of 11, British Gas have overestimated the February and March production and underestimated the April production. The feed-in tariff rates increase on 1st of April each year, so their estimated reading for that date has always been in their favour. They have slightly underpaid me, yet again, this year by just over £5, a greater amount than usual because of this year's higher inflation rate. That's not a lot of money, but will become a large amount if all of their customers have the same experience. In the past, I finished each video with screenshots of the home energy usage graphs from the Tesla app for each day of the month, but they don't give the whole picture. This month I've stitched the four graphs that you can see in the Tesla app for each day into one panoramic picture, so I'd better go over what you'll be seeing. Here's the picture for Sunday the 22nd of May. 
Anything blue is to do with the energy consuming property including the car. Yellow is solar, green is powerwall and grey is grid. On the left is the home energy usage graph showing in green the energy coming from the powerwall and in yellow is the solar energy. In the winter you'll also see a lot of grey representing energy taken from the grid. Second from left is the solar graph. Blue shows the energy which goes directly to the property and green is the energy going into the power wall. Bits of grey is energy being exported to the grid. Third is the power wall graph where above the axis we should see only blue representing energy provided by the power wall to the property. Below the axis is energy going into the power wall. Here it's all yellow solar but there could also be some grey when grid energy is stored in the power wall. At the bottom we can see the state of charge in the power wall throughout the day. And on the right is the grid graph. Above the axis is energy from the grid, so it could be blue for energy going direct to the property or green for energy going into the power wall. In the summer I hope to see little activity here. Below the axis is energy exported to the grid, so that should only ever be yellow. I'll now finish this month's report with those graphs from the Tesla app for each day of May and I hope to see you again in a month's time.